sweet. We're live. <laughs> Hello. Hello. My, my friend Athena that we literally, so you just barely rolled into my comment section like three days ago, it feels like. Right. <laughs> And don't worry, I didn't. I did not think anything um, odd at all because that's how that's how I felt when I came across. Well, actually, no, I'm I'm gonna lie. I was not as gung ho because when I came across this information, which by the way was in 2019 or 2020, I was like, wait a minute, what? Like, right. I I I had a hard time wrapping my head around it. And what we were talking about just before I hit the live was asking if you were familiar with Vedic and Sidereal and you said, yeah. So how come when you learned about those systems, it never was like the light bulb moment that the true Sidereal was? Did you look into them? Did you understand how they were different from Western tropical? Yeah. Like I understood, I understood it, but it was still, we were still missing pieces of the personality is what my point was. Like I felt mm. like when people got to the point where they were working with their shadow, it right. didn't really match up with what I was really reading, no matter what I did. So okay. I let me, let me pull else. up your chart while we're at it. Cause it's always nice to have a reference point, but yeah, I got my, when chart. you're, when you're looking at the shadow, what, what, um, placements or like, what were you using for that work in the Western tropical system? I use more of like where your Mars and your moon and like your South node. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> is well, really so where this, I was is, this is what's going to be exciting for me to chat with you too, is that a lot of um, finding that a lot of the people in this um, real sky or true sidereal um, system, they, they're not that well versed in um, Western tropical. They kind of skipped over it. So a lot of the people that are, <clears throat> this is what I'll say. This is a wild, wild west out here, <laughs> basically, yeah. right? And anybody that's talking about the true sidereal system is kind of putting themselves in a position as like a pioneer. Hi, Lady Blind Wolf. Hello, hello. Um, and you, and we also have to be ready for scrutiny. We have to be ready for um, a lot of blowback because the Western tropical system of astrology is as much of an indoctrination type system religion as any other box that we've ever and those of us that are in it are people that are very strong willed the right. black sheep we've already broken out of other systems and right and we're like fuck no we're not gonna right we're not gonna go back in a system but we didn't realize right. how much we were in another system right. yeah it was actually it, that's 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 it it was so mind-blowing it caused and for me i was like wait a minute out. what i've spent all these years i spent all this money <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I have, even in Western tropical, I've, I've all different software. Um, most of my study has been through, um, it's an organization called the Church of Light. Right. And they're considered to be hermetic astrology, which right. is still Western tropical and mm -hmm. have a very a fancy system. And I took all these certification courses and just books. I mean, you can, I don't know how much you can see in my shelves, but my entire top row, that's pretty much yeah. all tropical astrology and I never resonated with Capricorn. So I in Western <laughs> tropical was a Capricorn sun with a Capricorn Venus and um, Aries rising and a Leo moon. When I learned about the Aries rising Leo moon, I was like, okay, because I definitely have always been more of a fiery. I, I have a certain um, imbued confidence that I didn't ever know where that came from. That fit Aries rising for sure. But in the true sidereal, so where things were at, what kills me too in the Western <laughs> tropical, what do we say? Well, we need the accurate time. We need the accurate time because we right. need to see what's on the ecliptic. And then that's what that's what sets up your whole chart, first house, right? That's not it at all what the fuck was on the ecliptic when you were born. No, <laughs> I know. I know it was so shocking. I, I had to relearn. So I'm a Pisces myself. rising and really that fits me like a glove and a mm -hmm. cancer moon. And that really was like heavy because both of those are heavy. Right. From an Aries rising Leo moon, that's like fun, fun, fun. Yes. And I was that. But then this higher self of me is so much more deep. And so I'm, I've always been like, I'm an empath for 15 years before P anybody right. knew what the fucking empath was. Right. <laughs> Not saying that an Aries rising and a Leo moon can't be an empath, but a fucking P Pisces rising Cancer moon is with a Sagittarius sun and Ophiuchus as my Mercury and my Neptune. 
Yeah, see how Fucus is new to me. So this is all, like I said, so you'll have to like baby it a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and this is what I can say to everybody. When you know yourself, your true self, yes. you will know that this stuff is not accurate. If you're honest and you're yeah. like, it doesn't resonate, this isn't right. I need to look further. I need to study more. You can hang you on to know. it. You can hang on to it forever if you want to. Right. Hello, B. Hi, Sherry. Hello, hello. You can hang on to it. And and that that's where <clears throat> it's hard going back to the being a pioneer because basically anybody that's talking about this system is um, definitely a rebel. Definitely. I mean, there's so much money and energy and now with social media influence with Western right. tropical astrology, it's like a huge, yeah, it's, well, so it's like us going up against the um, 1% of corporations. Yeah, no, the push with the solar eclipse in Aries. I'm like, you guys, it's not even not in, It's not anywhere near it. You're pushing this, this like this whole thing about the Aries. It's it's in Pisces. Um, okay, I, I, well, I, let's let's go back and say, what about the age of Aquarius that we've? We're not in the age of course. We're in I the know. age of Pisces, and right. why that's important is they've convinced us that that we just went through the entire age of Pisces. Um, Pluto just moving into Pisces. It just moved into Pisces. Right. We're told it moved into Aquarius. Why that matters is that this this Pluto and Pisces is supposed to be finally taking down. Um, sorry, <clears throat> Pluto and Capricorn. <clears throat> Pluto just moved into Capricorn, but we're told that it moved into Aquarius and we're right. told that we're in the age of Aquarius. I, I'm right. not saying I don't want to be in the age of Aquarius either, but there's so much power to be still, not still, just into the age of Pisces. Right. Right. Like, why are I, we skipping whole uh, um timelines? This is what I've been screaming about, but I had it's so hard to talk to anybody, which I was why I was so glad I came across you. Like you just popped onto my page at the right moment. You're like, like yes. But, yes. Because I was like, oh, she's gonna think I'm crazy, but please. So, <laughs> please, in, the, so in that couple of it. days, what um have you gone through and found any of the resources that I was talking about? Um you might not have seen every video, but I'll tell you, there's a couple people that I really respect in the in this um in this new system. One of them, his name's um Ike, Isaac, I always want to say Isaac Rodriguez, but he's one of the like conspiracy there, the boxer guy. Yeah. Um, what's yeah. his last name? He has a, if you are, are you on Facebook or no? Yeah. Oh, it is Rod. It is, his last name is Rodriguez. I think there's two Isaac Rodriguez's though. So, um, he has a group called, um, Sidereal Revolution. And it's a true sidereal group. Now, there are some people in there that are just regular sidereal, and there are some people in there that do Vedic, but for the most part, the guy that runs the group, he's true sidereal. Hi, Courtney. Um, I really respect him. He's a great teacher. I've taken his course, um, but the software that I'm using is Capricorn Prometheus. That's um, made by a guy named Athens Cremini. He also has a website and a YouTube called Mastering the Zodiac. So I'm giving shout outs to the teachers that I that I know. Right. However, what's funny is the same video that you've seen, somebody else who's a 13 uh, sign astrologer came in and said that she knows, now this is speculation, I can't back it up, but yeah. she said that she knows that Athens actually stole that software from somebody else. And I don't know who that person is. I told her to message me. I don't know. Sounds like there's already a scandal. However, if you want to run charts, which by the way, I keep getting sidetracked. I'm going to pull your chart up right now. If you want to run charts using Ophiuchus, and you want to have the actual size of the constellations, Capricorn yeah. Prometheus is the only software that I'm aware of that does that. Okay. Okay. So do with that what you will. Um, MasteringTheZodiac.com is where you would purchase it. I think I paid like 150 bucks or something for it, but I've. Work, worth like, every penny. I, who, who, who do you think is awesome, Courtney? Are you talking about Isaac or Athens? Athens is really kind of boring. Um, he's definitely not woo woo enough for me. No, no disrespect, but he's very, so, okay. The other weird thing about this, um, astrology is it's pulling from two very, uh, different groups. It's pulling from very awake, spiritual rebels, conspiracy theorists. Um, and it's pulling from very scientific minded, astronomical, like they like this system because it matches what? Right. Is in the sky from an astronomy standpoint. Very right. science, very trust the science. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Now, I don't know. I'm definitely not a trust the science girl. 
personally. Me, I am like question every fucking thing they've ever told me. It's probably the opposite. Yeah. I, I don't even think the sky's real. Are you kidding? <laughs> like, I think we live under a firmament. I think the earth is flat. So yeah. this it makes it does make it hard when and I'll tell people, do I have all the answers yet? No, no. because you know, we're told that the Western tropical system is there because of the procession of the equinoxes and the right. tilt of the axis of the earth, which I don't even believe that we're on a fucking globe. So yeah. can, can I tell you why it's that way? No, I can't. All I can tell right. you is if you go look right now with a telescope or any astronomical app, you're going to see that the sun is in Pisces. Yeah, straight up. You, there's no denying it. And every app you get, no matter what you download, it'll say flat out that it's in Pisces. Yes. And all the planets where it is, where the comet's coming in, all of it. Yes. So Athens, he's created a great tool or didn't. I'm not going to get into that, but I'm going to, I'm going to go down that rabbit hole and look. <laughs> maybe there's some other teachers out there that I want to know about, but right. um, I do like to give credit for the people who have helped me, whether I agree with them fully or not. I want to give credit. Right. Um, another person who I don't really vibe with their energy at all, but they have a lot of good information out there. Um, and she's actually a tarot deck creator. So this is how I came to this. Cause you own, you said you own a tarot. Yeah. Yeah, um, this is my okay. Story. Well, we are gonna have to do some other <clears throat> combos because I'm a full time tarot reader. I work on psychic apps and platforms, I make $217 an hour. So, if you want to, I mean, having a shop is awesome, but if you want to be able to like really make some money, I can help you do that too. And I help. Well, help yeah, my, my branch online is very like I have, uh, I'm a hardcore out there millennial. Like, I really didn't want to bran branch into the social media as much as I yeah. could. And now I kind of have to because, yeah. Well, we can, we can find some other uh, avenues for you, but okay. So I had a, I had purchased a tarot deck called the ancestral path tarot. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. The U S games deck from like, I think the, for sure the nineties or maybe the early nineties. And then I, I'm, I'm super, I've never been into the Greek pantheon. I've always been into Egyptian and um, Vedic. So I started with this. This is called the Ancestral Path Tarot. It's beautiful. I mean, yeah. stunning deck. Okay. And then I find out that she has this deck called the Ma'at Tarot. So this is to date my most expensive tarot deck. I, I fucking spent $444 on it with the guidebook, everything. She signed it. Didn't even know who she was. Didn't even know who she was. Then I find out, oh, I met a friend on YouTube. Her name is Rochelle and she has a page named Ameth Amethyst Ascension. Anybody that's not following her and including you follow her because she, we have done a lot on um, uh, True Sidereal, but she was the one who brought it to me, Rochelle from okay. Amethyst Ascension. So she's like, oh, well, if you like the Ma'at tarot, then you'll probably like the journey into Egypt. She's like, except for the journey into Egypt's true sidereal astrology. And I'm like, huh? Come again? What is it? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of astrology? And she's like, oh, it's real sky astrology. I'm like, what? what are you talking about? So she explains it to me. And I'm just kind of like, my jaw dropped open. I'd never heard of it. When I first wanted to get into astrology, I actually was attracted to Vedic astrology. However, I bypassed astrology and went to tarot for the longest time because my mom could not remember what time I was born. And my birth certificate does not say. That's exactly what I did, girl. I, that's how I found out another layer that it wasn't accurate because the more I got from, into, from what the deacon the walk, the more you learn, the more about the symbol. Did, did you ever do the, did you ever do the deacon walk or like learning about the deacons? Mm -mm. Well, a little bit. Well, okay. I did. But that's another reason why I knew I wasn't right because I wasn't some second deacon of a cancer either. I was like, right. no, that don't make sense either. Like I could, I could fit the mold. Yeah. But it wasn't, no. So, so now I have to relearn it all over again. Well, <laughs> I, to people that are learning about true sidereal in the beginning and they're like, they want to know, I'm like, hey, but you do kind of have to go. In my opinion, you kind of got to go back and learn the basics, which really all of the information, all of the books, all of everything, all of the material is for that system. Right. So go learn the, and that apparently at one time was where this, we, the sun would have been in Aries right now, right? Again, 2000 years ago, for whatever reason, whether that's procession, the equinox, we don't know yet, right. but until people like us are talking about it, we're not going to find those answers. We're still going to be beholden to the people that have been spoon feeding us false information 
for how long, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so anyway, back to these. Her name's Julie Kusha Watts, and she had gone to Egypt and had seen on the ceiling. Uh oh, did I lose you? I've lost Athena for a minute, but anybody that's on here, we're on YouTube. You can go find my YouTube if you want to be able to ask questions. Let's see if, um, hopefully Athena can come back on, but let me see if I have any questions in the chat. Courtney says, I don't die hard, take it as seriously because it isn't real. All is an illusion, but we must play the game and astrology is a side quest. Absolutely. I agree. Which one do you have, Sherry? Okay. I lost you for a second. Yeah. I don't, my, my son. There you are. Sorry no that. worries. I was just kind of looking at questions. So, um, so Julie had gone to Egypt and on the ceiling of Dendara had seen um, an image. It's Emotep. So Emotep is the healer, healer archetype in Egypt and was asking questions about it. And that's the, that's the symbol for Ophiuchus. Right. But then there's even a cooler story with Isaac who just went to Egypt a couple of years ago and he was also in the Dendera temple and they're looking up at all of the, the um, it's on the ceiling, all the different Zodiac signs. And then what they had done was they actually had cleaned all the soot and all of the years and years of like gunk off of the whole ceiling, except for this one square. And there was this one square that was still covered in dirt and they were like, they were hiding it. It was like so obvious. He was like, why did they just not clean that one square? And they're like, oh, um, I don't know. You know, they didn't have an answer. So then he asked, well, what is that? That was the image for Emotep. That was the image for Ophiuchus. So to me, it, well, to him, and then now, because I believed his story, it was like, it was symbolic that that was still in the dark. Right. So I think yeah. that the, the people who are in charge of that definitely knew what they were doing. So yeah, one that's another thing. My curiosity, as you can see in my chart, I just, I, I had a, once I know something and I can feel it and I get the download and I get yes. it. reading I do, every chart that I do, it brings me further and further and further and further. And it just, you know, I studied like alcohol and I truth, did all that stuff. Truth that's has a vibration. A food gift. Truth has a resonance. So you can hear it and you're like, even if you don't like it, which I didn't like it, I wasn't right. ready for this. Right. But I, I knew that. that it was true because I could feel it. And then I was like, fuck. Right. Well, and I'm going to be honest with you, finding out I was a Gemini, I, I refuse to believe it because as a cancer. And Geminis are one of the signs that get a lot of hard uh, archetype stereotypes. Right. And as a, right. And as um, a cancer who, of the, whoever the Gemini people are in this, you know, the tropical astrology, I don't, I don't actually get along very well with those people. So then to find out that I am an actual, <laughs> I'm like, Okay, if that isn't a shadow work for a circle. But, you know what? Ahead. Okay, but even if that's true, because, well, not if it's true, it is true for you. But even if we look at that, those same people that you were seeing as Gemini, I mean, as cancers, they're all still Gemini in this system too. So either way, we a lot of times don't get along with our, yes, our reflection. Tell me, that's why I said it was like a full circle shadow. Well, like, I'm wow. guessing that you were looking at... Um, a lot of us do look at the wrong thing. I okay, this is another thing that I that I, for me resonates <laughs> is that Western tropical astrology became popularized by what type of teachers? They were psychologists, right? Young, young, yeah, Carl Young, Fr Freud, all of those. Which, by the way, were fucking Nazis. Yeah, girl, we could keep going on. Okay. <laughs> So when did yeah. when did astrology turn from this higher ver or what is but meant to be this higher version of ourselves to this archetypal system? Through those that was the, those were the people that brought it into the mainstream. Yeah, they it's, were it the evil. It's when it turned evil. It's like what they yeah. use for excuses to become pedophilia and do all the crazy things that yes. we're not finding out about in the age yes. of Pisces. Yes. Yes. So when I looked at it like that, I was like, okay, so anyways, that whole system got hijacked, the stars, the energy mm -hmm. got make hijacked money. to mm -hmm. make it a matrix time space system to keep you fucking locked into it. So they right. give you your natal chart and they're like, this is who you're going to be. Right. And you are programmed from, from the get. 
And then when you're, when you learn about what, if the whole, if astrology is even a thing anyway, if we're going to believe in it at all, right. that these energetic influences based upon the um, frequencies and the magnetic fields and whatever, all of that stuff, right. With right. these different planets being in different signs, how could that possibly be real if what they're showing us, that's not where any of those planets are at. Right. It's because if we tell you something and you believe it, you'll manifest it. Right. And that's what the whole universal, ooh, I'm so glad I found you, girl. That's all I got to say. <laughs> so, just... okay. And so you, since you know this, um, the rising okay. sign, suppose, okay, sorry, go ahead. No, it's my dog. It's, he's starting to whine. You're fine. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're fine. He's just, he wants my attention. So the rising sign is also supposed to dictate like our physical appearance. For me, that was also what solidified it. I literally fit nothing with the Aries rising, but I am like textbook Pisces rising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I'm actually surprised to see I was still a Virgo. Uh, were you? Oh, so you were a Virgo rising either way? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so that's, but my, my moon, my sun, like I, I didn't know that my moon was like a cusp either. So I needed that to kind of be explained because it's like right on the line. So when I look it up and I try to get an explanation, it kind of gives me both that I get like my moon is in Aries, but it's also close to Taurus. So I can get some of one and all of another. Let me the... find your chart real quick. Like I keep saying I'm going to do. Athena, there you are. Yeah, normally I would pull up somebody's Western chart too, but I don't know why I didn't with yours. Okay, so here, let me go share screen. Okay, here you are. So, <clears throat> even though it's not that big. So, you're <laughs> talking about your moon. Oh, yes, right on the cusp. Well, it's at 26 degrees. No, this is 20, I think. 20. Okay, yes, because, but then this is where it requires the study to know. Because, again, in Western Tropical and in Vedic and in Sidereal, they do the equal 30 degrees of each sign. This one, right. there's not. So, then you're like, okay, well, how many degrees are there of Aries? I'm not even sure. Oh, also the other thing you, to note here is that then there's going to be argument even within this system based upon boundaries. I'm using the midpoint boundaries. Right. So you could get a book written by um, Julie Kusha Watts does not use the midpoint. She uses, I think, the UIE boundaries. So I have a book of hers, which I like, but all of her dates are a little bit off. Um, there's also... Um, some ladies on YouTube that are called the True Sky Crew. I bought a plant because I just wanted a calendar. I'm like, I need a calendar that reflects the actual placements. They had made um, a calendar and this goes. Wow. So if you want to know where the moon's at every day, this is going to tell you. But yeah. again, they also go off of the U. I don't know if it's UIE or UAI boundaries, but I like the midpoint because the midpoint is like, there's three boundary systems and midpoint is like right in the middle of both of those, the other two, if that makes sense. Okay. okay. So just so you know, if you looked in, in the different boundaries, you might end up going over into Taurus rising because you are right on the cusp. Oh, so what, were, what, what was your moon? What was your moon in Western tropical? So I was a Taurus moon. So I was a Cancer sun, Taurus moon, Virgo rising. But I also had half of my chart in Cancer, and I got nothing really in Cancer in this chart. Because that stellium was probably 10th house stellium Cancer, right? Yeah. Yeah. And nothing, like some of the stuff fit, like some of my past trauma fit, some of my, you know, some of the stuff fit. Yeah. But it just well, I still... think it makes sense that it will fit that version of you. And if you want to reach the most exalted. That's what I'm trying to do. This yeah. is it. That's why, because I was like, you know, I'm going to face it that I'm a Gemini. I got to, I got to talk about it. I got to figure it out. But you're here to be a teacher. What's so fucking horrible about that? Right. I mean, and you can't, if we're going to go off of a 28 moon cycle or a 28 day moon cycle mm -hmm. at a 13 month 13, year. And there's, gonna thir back, there's 13 full moons in a year. Right. And we're going to go back to the red. I mean, at this point I'm following the sky. Nobody's going to tell me different. And Maggie I want to, and I can't help anybody. Maggie, you can helping. you can message me for your chart for the calendar. You're gonna have to go follow the true sky. Oh, good, Rochelle's here. Hi, Rochelle, honeys. She oh, Rochelle's saying it's the IAU International Astronomers Union. But yes, 
Um, well, isn't there three systems then? Because we're using midpoint and I thought midpoint was kind of like the common ground between both of those other two. But you could look, oh, fuck, I'm trying to find that book to look and see. Well, actually what we can do, why don't we pull up open fucking Stellarium and see where the moon was at? Right? Yeah. Let's open Stellarium and put in your birthday. And let's see if it shows that it's in Taurus or Aries. Oh, the other thing that's going to mess us all up here too, is that then there's another constellation named um, Cetus that's right next to Aries, kind of like Ophiuchus. We're kind of like, why did they get, why, why isn't Cetus part of it? You know what I mean? Okay. What's your birthday? June? 25th, 84. 25th, 1984. I'm going to get the date in here and then I'll share it so everybody can see it. Oh, wait, I'm making you older than you are. <laughs> Please don't. So you turned 40 this year. 40. Which is why I'm like, you know, this has got to be a sign. I, I tell you because I knew. Girl, I, I swear I, to God, it came to me when I was, well, I actually was, maybe I was. 30 wait, well, I was 41 or 42. I think it came in my Uranus opposition or like right before that. What time? 1237. Oh, come on. Sorry, for everybody on TikTok, if you want to really have my attention, go to my YouTube. Okay. And then now let me add. Shoot. Hide. On um, Stellarium, it's not giving me my little toolbar to be able to add all the zodiac signs. Anyway, well, we'll have to do. I I don't think I can do it while I'm sharing my screen. So, okay. Um, but that's what I would do if it were my chart and I was right on the cusp like that. <clears throat> I would look up using Stellarium or any other astronomy app and see where, but okay. So for those of people that might not understand, because there are, I mean, there's endless constellations in the sky. So why are only some of them considered to be the Zodiac constellations? And what is the ecliptic? Some people don't know that. I didn't even, I didn't know that when I was just doing Western tropical, it's not like anybody teaches you that. That's the stuff yeah, that we no. learn through astronomy. So yeah, whatever signs the sun goes through as it travels and the other planets travel through it, those are the ones that are considered to be the constellation. And Ophiuchus is one of them. But right next to Aries is another one called Cetus that it go, the sun and the other planets go right through Cetus. So I'm not sure. I, I kind of think we should be adding that in, but I don't know how the right. 14 energy fits in. So anyway, just so you know. Yeah. But, Unless... Unless it's unless it's cut somehow and we're still missing some kind of timing, you know, like unless it's somehow, you know, because of how, oh, you know, how Scorpio is like right up under his butt, you know, right. On yes. His knee. And like maybe, you know, there's got it maybe just. Maybe. OK, so for that time that you started tracking the sky, you so you've seen how like. It barely goes through. um Scorpio, but you right. noticed that it was in Virgo for all those days. All those days. Oh, yeah. So were you following that lady back then last year, too? No. Like, oh, I okay. ended up, like, uh, how this ends up happening to me is I get these these inklings, and I do a little self-study, and then somehow it ends up getting validated somehow. That's right. how I'm coming across you, because yeah. for the girls that were commenting on the video, these are my girls that I'm like, no, you guys don't understand. Look at this app. Look at the sky. Like, this is not right. We need to talk about it. So we went on a deep dive of all of this stuff wow. and it, it it took us all by like a huge like whoo, and that's yeah. when i started connecting to more and more people and i noticed that the timing is still slightly off but you have to be out there literally measuring the sky well that's my next step is that because i'm going well how much can we really just trust these um astronomy apps right they could tell us whatever. right we need to be out with telescopes <laughs> looking right at the sky right. Um, there's a book I'm looking for. Okay. This is a book that I have found invaluable. It's called gate and key. 
this has the 13 signs in it. Um, it, it was on Amazon. I think it was like 15 bucks now, but then if I open it up, so like if we're going here, it says the dates are September 17th through October 17th. It's yeah. in Virgo way longer than that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm sure she knows. Well, I wonder if Rochelle knows. Rochelle, do you, is she using the, um, IAU boundaries in this one? Also on Rochelle's page, she made a bunch of shorts, YouTube shorts. She made one for all 13 of the signs that give the midpoint dates. The midpoint are the ones that resonate the most with me. Hello. <laughs> Hello, puppy. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. You, so I'm I what I need to do is I love this book and I need to just go in and mark the um the actual dates. Right. I know. Yes. I yeah, this book is the IAU. But so, but let me go to the Ophiuchus. So, because you, a lot of people are interested in the Ophiuchus. And like I said, in your reading, it's similar to Scorpio and it's going to share the eighth house with Scorpio. But Scorpio is more of the, the, the transformation, Pluto, the death, the rebirth, um, resurrection, the taboo and the sexuality. Right. And then Ophiuchus is more of like the healing, um, the kundalini, the, right. the occult, which is just means hidden knowledge. Right. And so, and so I wasn't surprised that you had, um, Ophiuchus placements because I think anybody that has Ophiuchus and Scorpio too, yeah, we're what, literally here to be talking about this. No. What does that mean for me? Like that Ophiuchus one, what does that mean? So you're, so you ended up just having your Elium Coeli there, which, so, cause again, I didn't know you knew anything about, um, astrology, but you still have that's so it's you know the the op opposite of your midheaven but right. you've got you've got your um neptune did i oh no that's your honest you've got your honest in scorpio um here i'm gonna read you ophiuchus right now but when they say oh well, the ophiuchus is so small that's why they took it out um it's literally in 15 days for both of them mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense oh yeah. and also the um so now he's called the serpent bearer. Okay. Right. But, and it, it's always been the serpent, but it was a female sign before, before right. the, the Greeks changed it. Yeah. That's what I was. So what I was learning was the male version of that, which is why I was like, oh, really? He went to the goddess Athena, which, uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and he went there and got some kind of potion to, you know, bring people back from the dead. And yeah. He wasn't supposed to do that. And I'm like, oh, great. So they, they just, they just took him right out of the constellation because of that. Well, I was hearing somebody say it used to be like it would split in half and like these six were masculine and these six were feminine. And now the only feminine sign is Virgo. Right. Because the rest have been changed to animals or they're men. Right. Because Cancer's a crab, the sea go, right. the what else do we have? Right. No, all of it. Well, I mean, this one's a cop. Okay, Rochelle says um, for your Eamon Coeli being in Ophiuchus and at the center, because because Ophiuchus is at the galactic center. Right. Western astrology is going to tell you it's Sagittarius, but it's really Ophiuchus, okay? Right. Obviously, they're next to each other. But so she's saying um, for it to be in Ophiuchus and the center of the galaxy and also the lowest part of the, of the sky when you were born and the most intimate spot on your chart. So to you, to, to her, it represents spirit. So that's like your spirit energy being in Ophiuchus. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so here we go. Oh, Fuca's the serpent bear. Um, sidereal dates, but again, this is the IAU, is November 30th to, through December 18th. Um, so the ruling planet is Chiron. The element is the Aether, which makes sense. Like, did you watch the movie, The Fifth Element? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All of this has all been, oh, figures. Mm -hmm. Right? We have to have the fifth element. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Ruling planet Chiron, polarity, gender, it says feminine, but I think maybe it is. I used to say that um, Aquarius was um, non-binary, but maybe it's Ophiuchus, because if it's Aether, which is all the elements, then maybe the gender quality it, is both. Yeah, because it wouldn't. Yeah. Although I kind of prefer it to be feminine, because of course I want that divine feminine. So either way, again, do what <laughs> resonates. This is where we all have to kind of trust our discernment, right? It kind of makes I'll sense. Give, 
Vir- Virgo, the only female, is the longest. But then we also Ooh, yeah. cut her life in half, you know? Like, her life yeah. essence is, like, distributed throughout. Um, yes, I agree. But oh, that was the part that made the, the system make so much sense, too. And I've said this in the videos. If you were the creator, do you think that we would need the exact amount of every one of those energies? Or yeah. do we perhaps need more of certain energies like Virgo? Right. And less of other energies like Aries, Scorpio, you know what I mean? It just makes sense that we don't need the exact amount of everything. Yeah, that's exactly it. We're not, it's like, it's not, we're not all made equal kind of business. Like we are as together as a whole. Yeah. Some. Of but us- we've all got different assignments and it makes sense that we right. don't need the same amount of everybody, you know? Okay. So some of the positive expressions for Ophiuchus are seeker of knowledge, magical, fiercely protective, natural healer. Liberty loving, egalitarian, creative, divine feminine, most magical of the zodiac, light worker. And although I would say, I would say shadow worker. Yeah, that same. I would say shadow worker for both Scorpio and Ophiuchus, right? Same. Um, unconditional love, liberator, deepest cult wisdom, nurturing. Negative expressions are openly rebel, which <laughs> how is, that <laughs> negative? is that really a negative? I don't think right. so. Um, cruel, victim, secretive, destructive, angry, vengeful, trickster, reclusive, misunderstood, violent, kill or be killed. So it's pretty intense. So but this that. will talk all about Ophiuchus, um, talking about um, Ptolemy, which again, even if we go back before like Carl Jung and the archetypal system, we go back to Ptolemy who he, you know, changed a lot of things. That's back. Those are the, the Greek the Greeks are the people that, that changed the calendar and all of that stuff. Right. Yep. Um, so yes, I recommend this book. Okay. Don't even know who the author is, but I found it. Um, but back to um, Julie has some good deck. So this journey into Egypt, this is a tarot deck that has the true sidereal. Well, she doesn't call it true sidereal. She calls it real sky. Um, I think she's got some good information. I don't like her vibe actually at all. Um, I find her to be quite, um, condescending and she's not at all into any type of open mind about conspiracy. She's offended when people talk about aliens or like the Anunnaki. So for me, I, I look, I, I take the information I appreciate the information. I will give shout outs to, to the people that I've learned from, but it's not my favorite person. Right. I hear you. But we're limited here. And I and I know I'm not her favorite person too. And I don't care because <laughs> I'm not gonna my again, my my Mercury is literally in Ophucus. I am here to talk about the things that people don't want us to talk about, to shine a light on that which has been hidden. Right. And I don't have a problem with I feel like that's been me my whole life too. <laughs> well, where is your Mercury? Let's see what else Rochelle says. Rochelle says she personally thinks that Ophiuchus is associated with past life psychic communication ancestor more. Totally agree, especially with it being there in um, between Scorpio and Sagittarius. I mean, even just look at that energy, right? Right. So your Mercury, oh, your Mercury was in in Gemini. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for sure, like you're you're here to teach. Aw. Them what are, what what so you're so you're you're do you're working with tarot what what well, what, so, what else did you do all right so um i start well i started with tarot okay that was the easiest way to break in with people and start talking with people but yeah. i did tarot oracle after that i actually just started reading people like i started doing their names and their numbers and yeah. soul contracts and um soul journeys and i really are you doing about- soul contracts with like the um star well, like you put your, yeah, you put your name in, you figure out the numbers, like, you know, and I went yeah. course after course after course, like I, you know, I, yeah. I, got, I got, you know, a certification in alchemy, I got a certification in Fibonacci numbers and the, Ooh. yeah, like I went through such a, and I'm not even done. I have a, like a, a like this test. kind of soul contract. Yeah. Similar to that. There's more to it because there's more layers that we didn't even realize. Well, I would love to hear you. See, I need a teacher too. I've had this done. I think I have, I think somebody on TikTok 
did this for me. She was a really cute blonde girl that was like blown up in 2020. When did you get on TikTok? Oh, well, I was one of those old school that had it for a hot minute, but yeah, it was pandemic time. Yeah, me too. This well, this the the TikTok that you found me on is like my fourth account because I get banned. <laughs> I I, I, get I toned I toned down my conspiracy content only because it was putting me in a really dark place. And I think you have to wake up and you have to see the truth, but I don't think you need to live there. Right. And I had a hard time breaking free. Once you realize the truth, it's hard not to stay. We're sovereign. And to me, the true sidereal is part of claiming that sovereignty. Yeah. Once I broke out of the Western tropical system, I've kind of almost broke out of all of it as a system. Right. Same. This what you. This is what you're witnessing right now <laughs> in me. It's like, right. okay, I can tap into those. I have this energy here that is potent if I want to, but I am whatever the fuck I want to be. Right. I'm all of it. And I, it doesn't control me. Right now. But I feel like we needed to learn it. So, you know, to somebody who's never had a reading, I'm not saying it's worthless. It's totally valuable. It's so right. valuable. Right. But we have to go through all these little steps to reclaim our sovereignty. And and this was a huge step for me. Right. You know? I agree. Um, But I don't know. I wow, guess it's really interesting. I knew I had a placement. I knew it. When you... um. We're listening to that, I, I guess, because you're like, oh, I have, I don't, I want to give you a chance to ask the things you wanted to ask because I'm a talker. So now I'm like, okay, let me know. Uh oh, I just lost you. There you are. Uh, you're back, but I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear. Can you hear me? Shit. Mine? Yeah, your sound's gone. Athena, we can't hear you. Oh, you can hear me still? Okay. Did I do something? Is she muted? No. Click it and unclick it. Start it and restart it. There, wait, there you are. There you are. There you are. Okay, maybe now. There you are. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yay? Yes. But I don't know if you're hearing me because, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I can't hear you, though. That's the... No, all of a sudden, I lost you. I don't know what happened. Okay. Let me keep talking so that... I don't have you now, girl. You do or you don't? Hold on. I'll leave and come back. Okay. I think I have to invite her back in. Yay. What about okay. that? There we go. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that, everybody. T t tis Mercury Retrograde pre shadow. It is. It's nonstop. Now, for me, that type of stuff, I mean, I just, I don't know. I mean, I just, I, it is what it is. And I think that the pre shadow is sometimes more intense than the retrograde. Yes. Welcome mm -hmm. back. Okay, but what were you saying? Because I could tell it was something good, but we couldn't hear you. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, I, it was for me. It was I. I feel like a whole different person. Like come put, breaking down the chart and seeing this, it was totally. I. I it was almost like I didn't want to believe it. So I'm. I'm, I'm also time. trying to do to deliver it different, but it's a transition, right? It's a transitional thing. I'm trying to get away from those archetypes. 
and see it from the higher octaves also. Right. Um, and again, uh, Isaac is a really good teacher for that. I mean, I just can't say enough good things about him. Uh, Rochelle's in the middle of his master class right now. I did his master class for three months for like the unlimited one was like 1200 bucks and it's worth it, but I just didn't have the bandwidth. So I just did like a three month preview. Oh, let me tell you something else that's going to blow your fucking mind. Okay. Ready. And he's the only person that I've heard talk about it. Although I know he has other teachers and Rochelle can help us pipe in on this too. Cause again, she's right. She's like, she's balls deep in his class right now. <laughs> Good. So, okay. Since you understand the ascendant and the rising sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. So over here in the East, right. That was what was rising in the East. And then the planets move in that direction. Just like the sun rises in the East and sets in the West. So it's moving that way, cl clockwise. Right. So then why tell me, then why is the first house anti-clockwise below moving counterclockwise? Mm. Shouldn't the first house, so he does what's called an anti-clock or a clockwise system where the ascendant and then so then the 12th house is the first house, the 11th house is the second house, because that's the natural order that the sun and the planets move. Right. That blew my mind. That's interesting. There are, there are some okay. other books out there and other teachers that teach that that are Western tropical as well. Tarot Destroyer. Astrology is very personal, intuitive, and each astrologer is going to have a different perspective. It's nice to learn from others. Just like tarot. Um, I agree to that to a certain extent, Tarot Destroyer. But if you're going to talk about, if you're going to tell people, the, your rising sign, this was what was rising when you were born. And that's not what the fuck was in the sky. I just think that's misinformation and disinformation. And it's okay to get defensive over something. Trust me, I fucking was. It took me, it was harder for me to walk away from Western tropical than, I mean, I walked away from a family religion that both my, my mom and my dad's like for generations have been a part of, right? Like West to leave that system. It's, it's hard. I'm not judging anybody for being in it, but I also don't think it's fair just to be like, oh, it's like tarot. Like I read it intuitively. Like, no, if we're going to, if we're going to talk about that, these planets are in the sky influencing us. And then we're going to just tell people that this is where the planets were at, but that's not where the fucking planets were at. That's just misinformation. It's fake news. Yeah. So you can hang on to it as long as you want to hang on to it. No one's, I'm not here to force feed anything to somebody, but I don't think it's the same thing. And I read tarot all day long and I agree tarot is, it's just different. It's just a different thing, but okay. So, so to go back to that system, so how would that look differently? So again, this is just, this is just providing you with a potential to look at yourself differently. If we were to set up your first house as the 12th house, so then your stellium would be what? One, two, three, which is kind of ironic for you because you kind of, you do have a lot of energy in the third house either right. way, right? Right. But how does that influence of a third house stellium Gemini um, show up differently than a 10th house? Because third house would be more focused on the education aspect of it. Right. Versus 10th house is really somebody who's like really career driven. Right. You don't seem to um, fit really 10th house energy that much. No, I'm more, my, my energy is more ethereal. It's been like that since the get. I've always... Um, well, really, that's the higher octave of Gemini, right? Yeah, like I felt more like a split type. Like I had one human being and one spiritual being always in my body. That was always hey, in a fight with each other. What is a Gemini? The well, twins. and that's what I didn't understand about having a cancer. <laughs> like, oh, you got all this water. And I'm like, I don't even like water. I don't even like going into water. I mean, yeah. I love rocks and I yeah. love being by the water who doesn't like being by the ocean but it's not like my soul called to the water like is like right. like as much as it's called to the earth and it calls to other things yeah it just it never resonated and like i said the more you know yourself yes. and fully truly know yourself you know that this doesn't align and right. you gotta it out right so as you as you're going through this i would challenge you to just look at that and 
sometimes when learning astrology anyway, didn't you find it more powerful looking at other people's charts anyway? Because we're always going to be most, I guess, kind of maybe have our blinders on with ourselves. Right. Well, so a lot of times right. it's easier to see it in your partner or your mom or your kids. So if you can pull up somebody that you know, like the back of your hand mm -hmm. and look at it in the clockwise house system where that reverses, because again, that would be the natural order of things to go in that counterclockwise one through 12. That is, that is disharmonious. Well, it's just, it makes me wonder though, cause you know about, you know, like, so you got the, you get the earth that's right. And then it's, it's built like a clock and you got the 12 and you got the one or the, yes. six, you got the North and the South and blah, blah, blah. Well, if the horoscopes are like that too, and, the, and all of them are aligned in this line, yes. then we are in a Taurus field. So there would have to be an, a, an opposite energy. Yes. So maybe the houses are opposite because it has to be in order to make okay. it. Better. Sure. Sure. Yes. I, I don't, I don't have the answer on that. I, I mean, it's just the thought that, right. No, thought. I just, I know that when I heard it, I was like, whoa, just like when I heard there is a 13th. Well, I actually remember hearing about the 13th sign back around 2012. A lot of what's weird right now is a lot of the themes were themes back pre 2012 with like the end of the world and Nibiru right. and all the things. Um, it take, I, I have to hear something and you're like, okay, I'm going right. to consider it. And then if it comes back around two or three times back to your awareness, you're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to dig on on this. So I, I learned about that, like at the very tail end of my three month access to the master class, just enough to be like, whoa, I haven't started interpreting charts that way. Um, bye Sherry. Good night. Oh, I'm, or Rochelle's leaving. I, I, I'll have to get with Rochelle because she, Rochelle, I've talked with the most and I trust her opinions and I know that she's in that class right now. So we'll have to talk about that some more later, but I just wanted to present that as like a. I've, I'd never heard that from anybody ever before. Mm -hmm. um, but to go to also, okay. Um, one of the things that I was trying to use to help me to, to decide what system, because the world makes us think we have to choose also. Right. It makes right. us think that if we're going to be open to true sidereal, that somehow we have to push out Western tropical. I don't yeah. believe that. I don't su subscribe to that. I still see the value in that system. And maybe that's because of all of the value and the energy that I put into it that I'm refusing to let, let go of, you know? Right. But one of the stories that, that got me was, I don't know if you're familiar with a, a famous astrologer from the 1920s. Um, she was the astrologer where the famous quote from JP Morgan Chase of um, millionaires don't use astrologers, billionaires do. Right. Yeah. You've heard that quote. Yeah. So she was his astrologer and her name's Evangeline, um, Evangeline, hold on, Evangeline Adams. Yes. Evangeline Adams. This is the, um, seer of wall street. Hmm. This is her story. So she was actually like put in jail for doing astrology in New York city in the 1920s. And um, I've gotten several of her books because I was like, ooh, she, she was she was helping him make money off the stock market. Like, so obviously the system she was using was accurate. Yeah. And it just makes me wonder if it was still the system we're looking at right this second. It, she was using what? she was using Western Tropical. She was using Western Tropical. So I was like, OK, well, well, if that's a really accurate thing, like I was trying to wrap my head around it. But it makes sense that, well, obviously, J.P. Morgan Chase was a master mason, Illuminati, mm -hmm. occult, right? All those things. So anybody that he would have been using as an astrologer is likely those things, too. And is part right. of the reason that it was switched anyways is because they are able to manipulate it and and use it for those type of things. Right. Because yep. if enough belief is there, this is what I'll always say to everybody too. I mean, not only did you believe you were a cancer for all those years, but the world and the world we live in, the Western world, the United States, all believes 
that that is the energy of cancer. So mm -hmm. that all of that collective belief, it, it creates its own power, its own consciousness, right? It's called an egregore in magic. Mm -hmm. It's like, I tell people, what if we were to switch Christmas from December 25th and we made it like Thanksgiving where we're like, okay, we want it to be the third Saturday of December. Right. Cool. Um, aren't you still going to think of Christmas on December 25th? Yeah. When you've celebrated Christmas as December 25th every day for your entire life, all of your ancestors on both your mom and your dad, as far back as we know, right? December 25th has been Christmas. It imprints on that mm -hmm. date. So we can change it, but that doesn't mean the energy isn't still imprinted. That's what a ghost is half the time. Yeah. Ghosts are not usually, unless it's like a poltergeist or some other thing, usually if there's a haunting, it's like a soul fragment that got stuck from a trauma in that thing. And that's why if you go to like a haunted house or like a hotel, the same thing will happen at the same time. Yeah, It's like a record that scratches. Right the energy imprinted and got stuck there. So that's kind of what the Western tropical system is. So again, it's not to say that you're not going to have any value, but don't you want to be more than that? Don't you want to be free? And don't you want to claim your sovereignty instead of being an energy that's stuck repeating? Right. That's what I'm that's saying. What I think. I'm but. A lick of cancer. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm a cancer moon now. I'm a ball baby. I'm a, I cry at everything. That made sense. The same though. Like I cry. I am emotional. I have all the things. I'm just as moody as the moon sign going and all the things. Right. It's just once I broke free of my mask and my shadow self mm -hmm. and I started really becoming who I was meant to be, I realized I no, I I cannot shut up. I am meant to talk and communicate, that I meant to teach. Damn that I'm and I like it's nonstop and having the split within like, and knowing there's a split. If I denied that, that is doing more harm to myself and yeah. then anybody who I'm around. What was your favorite placement in Western tropical? Like, what did you pride yourself on? You're like, I'm a da, 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 da. You know, everybody has something. They're like, damn, I love it. I don't know. I like being a Virgo rising. But you get to keep that. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I really liked being that because once I realized where my like analness, like my striving to become like yeah. really organized and really, yeah. you know, like really um, striving to be that. But, 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 but. and know. again, I like to, I like to focus on what you have in common in both charts too. I think there's a lot of power in that. And what you have in both systems is you have that Pluto, Saturn, Mars <laughs> in yeah. the second house. Okay. Yeah. So, but they're all training your 10th house of career. Right. Right. Okay. So how is that, how is that shown up? Were you struggling with, with money or no? No, I've never, but see, I don't know. I've never, no, I've never once. <laughs> well, I've then you must be in alignment, been, right? Because been. that's what all that trying energy, your mid heaven, sun, Venus, Mercury you have access to, to that. So you must be using it if you're not struggling. Cause to have all three of those, I was like, who me? Yeah. I'm anybody, anybody <laughs> that has all yeah. of the malefic planets in one house. I was like, and then to have it in the second house, I was like, damn girl. Yeah. See, this is why I wanted you to be like up right in front. So this is me and looking at this anew. So I've not really broken myself down about it. Yeah. Um, I only looked up the top five let's say oh okay um you know whatever yeah. and then looked at my chart and i tried to look at it but i was in denial i was like no well that's that, no. that's where that's where sometimes they say being delusional is actually a benefit right because yeah. um now that the sun's gone down i don't need that extra light as much because that's how these systems can work against us. If we believe like, what if I would have, this is where it becomes kind of a moral thing as a reader too. Okay. What if I would have, what if you would have had a reading with me 15 years ago and I would have told you about all that malefic energy in your second house, I could have convinced you you're going to have money problems your whole life. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not lying about that. That's what the energy is, but mm -hmm. maybe because you didn't know and you never focused on it, you didn't let it stop you. That's yeah, where money. systems can become detrimental. And me is as a tarot reader, and I'll be interested to hear how you feel about this. 
I rarely, and I mean rarely, read my own cards. Yeah, same. I mean, so rarely. It's not because I'm like, I will decide. Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, and I kind of feel like I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm not comfortable reading my own cards. I'm and just, if I do, it's from a very like high level spiritual pers uh, yeah, perspective. perspective. I'm not like right. asking questions like, trying to make decisions i'll make my decisions right i'm asking more like yeah i'm right there girl i and it's exhausting coming back down for those from those and i do those very sparingly oh because i try to good. do my i try to feel more my intuition and then yeah. if i really need to like double check or triple check or well, we i need i i i would like to it, it's hard because there's so much um access to abundance in this, in yeah. the way that I'm reading now, I, it, but that's the kind of readings there. And it's so not in alignment anymore for mm -hmm. me. So I'm trying to not trying. Cause I don't even, I don't like that word. I don't believe in that word. I am currently working on manifesting my income from other sources so that I can get away from that. You know, it's been a blessing for sure. Um, because I literally don't have to schedule anything. I just show up when I have the energy and I turn it off. Like when I, cause I have a shop too. Right. I've literally, I, I start, I started paying rent for another shop. I have a beautiful office here, but I don't like to bring strangers into my home. So then I started renting a space and I literally have not taken one appointment for over two months now. I'm just paying rent for fucking nothing because I have such a, an issue scheduling. Mm -hmm. I don't know and I can't guarantee that my energy is going to be there that day. Yeah. And I don't want to work, whether it's astrology or tarot, certainly not coaching. I don't feel like it's fair for me to show up and coach you if I'm not in my highest energy. Yeah. I'm right there with you. So if I could find a way to do that with my private clients, well, that's why I don't have to schedule. That's why I've pretty much done it in my home is because, I mean, I have, you know, the shop and my, I have a reading room on the outside of my house. I have a whole shed set up with a garden and all that. Okay. Uh, but I've been taking, I, I've been taking more with it at home because I feel the safest here. Like, even if I was reading at another place, it wasn't mm -hmm. really my own yet. Right. So basically the, the, my safest place. I wonder though, if I would find, if I was reading from that, do, working from that higher octave, I probably wouldn't be as drained actually. Right. And I, and you're not like, I'm not at all. I did. Um, my biggest thing I did was like a whole high school and there had been close to 400 people there. And it was just wow. not stop from nine 30 to the high school four. brought in a reader. Yeah, uh, the high school did out here where what I the live. hell? <laughs> and um, yeah, they brought in a reader. It was they did it the year before, but I had not. I was not associated with them. That's um, but then, yeah, and it was great. But I was not. I felt. I felt like I was still there when I walked out of that building. Yeah, so, sometimes when you leave, because you're in, you're all in your higher chakras. So I'll I'll get done with something and I'll feel like I'm high. Right. But then when I come down, it's like, oh my god, I get kick down to the dirt you know well and that's because this energy here sucks this whole earth energy no matter what we say no matter what we do we got people possibly flying stuff into the solar eclipse we got bridges collapsing we got you know tides happening. Yeah, all of that in my opinion is all distraction 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 right. from those of us who are here to hold the light those of us that are mm -hmm. Here, that's what I believe the 144,000 is, is we just have to have that critical mass of right. at least 144,000 people holding their highest vibration, projecting yeah. and manifesting the, the, the earth where that system comes down. Right. Um, that goes back into Pluto just entering Capricorn instead of we're told right. Pluto just entered Aquarius. No, the fucking government needs to fall still. So we need Pluto and Capricorn right now. We don't yeah. want to bypass that. Trust me. Right. That's why I was like, wait, we're not really, oh, we're not really ready yet for the age of, like, we're not. No. No. Like, and there's just, nothing there. It's not that there's anything wrong with that, but we have stuff to do still right. on this timeline that needs to be taken down before we can get there. And right. they're just bypassing that and going right to AI. So yep. it seems like it fits. Yeah, it, up. it does fit, but that doesn't mean that if, if we just put all of our focus on, that aspect of it, that's what we're going to see instead of realizing, oh, 
Pluto and Capricorn, that's going to take down all of those systems, all of the hierarchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100. I, that. I um I got to go to the gym tonight, so I'm going to wrap us up. I'm going to leave you with one okay. more rabbit hole and anybody else that's watching. So I don't know if you're familiar with um, how astrology relates to your physiology. Okay, so then there's a whole other branch of astrology, like medical astrology, right? Like mm-hmm. Leo rules the heart. Mm -hmm. Um, Capricorn rules the ankles, I think so on and so forth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's a whole, there's all all this information out there about when you discover like you're, you're working with the moon to, to rise the called like the Christ oil up your spine for Mm -hmm. like awakening all of that. Okay. This is a book called, um, the Zodiacs and the salts of this, of salvation. Mm. It's like really old. Okay. So basically based upon your um, astrology, you have different um, salts that you're supposed to be working with. Now it makes sense that they would not want us to know which ones to actually work with. Right. But of course this is written for Western tropical. So it doesn't include Ophiuchus anyways, but there's a lot of power. This is a great book, but as like a cheat code, um, this is, I, I'm always talking about, so if you ever hear me talking about it on my videos, that's where it comes from. These are called bioplasma cell salts. Mm. So these contain all 12. So you can like read this whole book and then you can decide if you're going to go off of West. So let's say you're a Gemini now, right? Mm-hmm. So let's go to Gemini. So cancer would have needed calcium fluoride. And it'll tell you all about why. But Gemini's is. Yeah, Cancer's a stomach. Gemini. Unless your lungs. Oh, Gemini's before Cancer. Um, I don't, I'm trying to remember. Your lungs? I think so. That makes sense with communication that you need to breathe. Uh, okay, so Gemini's salt would be Kali Mur. K-A-L-I-M-U-R. Okay. But this one contains all 12. And then guess that made me think like all together, all 12 together, just like Ophiuchus is aether, which is all the elements. This Uh would be all of the cell salts. Uh So this is either the cell salt for Ophiuchus or just to be safe, we need to be taking these. So I take these like three to four times a day. They're like 10 bucks on Amazon. You take like three or four. They look like tiny baby aspirins. And you put them under your tongue and they dissolve. Mm, that's cool. Game changer. If you're, if you're wanting to stay on top of your DNA upgrade game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you want to keep that body vibration just keep as Keep that high. body vibration. Yep. I started taking these. and learned about these at the same time I learned about True Sidereal, which was in 2020. So anybody that's not working with bioplasma yet, this the brand is called Highlands, which is a homeopathic like mm-hmm. medicine maker. Yeah. And you can get them at most um health food stores. Oh well they kicked me off my live on TikTok because I wasn't responding to anybody. Oh, good Lord. That's okay. All right. Well, real quick, let's see if anybody had any questions. Well, I will definitely be hanging out more. Trust me. Oh, Tarot Destroyer is a bot. Okay, awesome. LOL, you need gay moderators in this chat to get bots on your chat. But I guess we got bot act- bot activity. Ban user and delete. All right. So get into that true, or that's not called true sidereal. Get into that sidereal revolution group. Trust me, there's going to be a ton of good nuggets in there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you need anybody to run, if you have any charts that you want to look at, just send them to me and I'll run them to you and email them to you and tell if you decide you want to get this system or not. But like I said, it's the only software that I know of that has all these components. Yeah, this was a little, ooh. <laughs> it also it's kind of cool is you can also do um the astro cartography in this too and i don't know if you ever went down the astro cartography rabbit hole 
Is that the? That's where you'll line it up on the map of the earth and you'll yeah. see where your, like your ley lines are. Yeah. Yeah. I've but done again, that. do you want to be working with what was in the sky 2000 years ago or what's in the sky now? Yeah. When I did that before, I don't know what chart it was legit or not. It just went off like my time and I don't exactly know how they figured that out. But when I looked through the, my median line or wherever I, you know, should have been or whatever, it was mm -hmm. dead in the middle of the. Well, you would look at it like, just like this, you would go, okay, it's not where should I be? It's like, okay, what do I want to work on in my life? What if, if I'm trying to find my soulmate and my lover, I'm, let's say I'm 45 and I'm single AF and I, I'm, I'm just having the hardest time finding a relationship, I would want to maybe look at where Venus is at and maybe move somewhere that lines up with my Venus line. Because Venus is love, right? So I, instead of having the houses in the planets and, and lays them out over the, the grid of the earth, this is where Venus was at when you were born. So any living in any of these countries would put you in alignment with your Venus energy. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. But now it's, and that makes more sense. I was looking at the midhaven. Yeah. Well, your mid your midheaven would be kind of important because midheaven again is kind of like what you're going to be known for. So if you move to where your midheaven line was, you you'd have a good uh that'd be a good career energy or a good networking energy. But let's say if you're just wanting to more focus on abundance, which to me is happiness, money, freedom, abundance is all of it. So that's like your Jupiter. So if you look where Jupiter, your Jupiter line is and you move to one of the countries or the cities where your Jupiter line lines up, you would be in alignment with your, right. your highest abundance. That's if you're going to move. But it's also kind of interesting to see, have you, have you lived where you've grown up your whole life? No, I, I was born in New York. Okay. So you have, you've moved. Mm -hmm. I, I literally live like 15 minutes from where I was born. So oh, I've never I moved. Like I'm done. Like I felt like, I feel like, uh, well, it makes sense as an air sent a little bit more now, but I always felt like I could just, as long as I had whatever I have on me, it's home. Or like with my kids or whatever. Oh, like I really have not, like. Not that way with your Jupiter in your fourth house. Cause I'm thinking Jupiter fourth house. Jupiter is really the planet of expansion. And then fourth house is the house of home. Also the mother. It's mm -hmm. also the mother energy. But I, I mean, I guess that makes sense that you could make yourself feel at home wherever you went, but mm -hmm. well, it is retrograde. Remember what I said about retrograde retrograde is like, then you're kind of like the anti-system. Right. Which makes it, what makes me wonder about like the, the, my second house here with the two in retrograde. Like, I'm just like, oh, there's so much to dive into now. Well, oh. remembering Pluto, Pluto is the planet that makes up a generation. So that's what makes you a millennial. Yeah. But yeah, but, I'm but here's my thoughts on that because it's a collective energy because Pluto is collective. I think it makes sense that maybe that does fit more with the Western tropical, which in Western tropical, actually you guys might end up with Pluto and Virgo in either system because Virgo is so much bigger. I wonder if you millennials have Virgo. Do you have access to your Western chart real quick? Yeah, right here. What's your Pluto in? Libra. Libra. So you're an elder millennial. So yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Cause I'm, I'm a Xennial. So I'm the, I'm an X and I'm an X -ennial, So I'm the tail yeah. end of Gen X. Right. I've got my toe in with the millennials. Right. And yeah. mine, my Pluto should have been in Libra too, but most, so most of Gen X is Pluto and Libra and the older Gen Xers are Pluto in um, Scorpio. Right. Now Pluto and Libra made sense for even millennials too, because Gen X and millennials were the first generation where most of our parents were divorced. Mm -hmm. Most. Right. And Pluto is the planet of death and trans transition and transformation. And Libra is love, marriage, you know, that type of thing. So that actually made a lot of sense to me for Pluto to be in Libra. But again, it makes sense if, if Pluto is a collective energy, because it's such a slow moving planet, Right. it doesn't affect you so much personally as it affects the generation. Right. So if most of our generation believes in Western tropical system, then it makes sense that that would imprint in that Pluto energy being more in the collective. Right. Well, I, so, I, until I mean, we hit critical I, mass and we might not ever hit critical mass where 
we will probably at least unless we do enter the new age and we get to live to be 300 years old, I doubt we're going to see uh, this system of astrology out popularize Western tropical. Yeah, I don't, right? I don't think we're, I don't think we're ready for that quite yet. We haven't really, yeah. we're only a quarter of the way. So, there. so you could, you could also look at it like that, where you look at your, your personal planet. So your Venus, Mercury, sun, uh, moon in true sidereal and then you look at the uh more external planets in that because they're more influenced by collective energy anyway the personal planets are closer to earth right yeah that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. but the other thing i would tell anybody it didn't matter in which system one of the things that i look at and i talked about with you in your recorded is that seesaw energy that you have how you have almost equal amounts up top and on the yeah. bottom so when you split that circle, you take the pie, you split it horizontally, everything up top are known as the public houses and everything below are the private houses. Right. Then if you split it, split it lengthwise, everything on the Eastern hemisphere is personal houses. Everything on the um, Western hemisphere is relationship. Right. Oh, hi. <laughs> I don't see how my parents procreated. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything, Bianca? All right. My husband just got home, but. Somebody with all that energy up there, especially the sun, that is that does typically typically end up being somebody that is more well known. Just saying. And then yeah, you go, okay, well, well known for what? Well known for what? Gemini, tenth house, so something to do with your career. Teaching. That makes and sense. And everything That's else is in ninth house, spirituality, higher learning. In Taurus. Mm -hmm. Taurus. I don't think it influences that much, but that's also your North node in the ninth house and North node. Again, no matter what system North node is what you're here to be going towards. So you're going towards ninth house, higher learning religion or spirituality, but clearly you chose spirituality. spirituality. And why that have... is, is because your South yeah. node, like I said, you can't tell me you weren't a witch in a past life. If you've got oh, South node Scorpio. 100%. Did you have sisters or no? No, I only have a brother. And I am the spiritual and he's the religious. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't mean he wasn't burned as a witch. And a lot of people that were or drowned or hung or whatever, people that have those past lives with that tend to run from it and run into religion because they are they have that fear and they don't want to die from it again. The only reason why I say that is because you've got it in the third house, which is siblings. So I would be really surprised if you didn't have that tied to your sibling, your brother. I, I you know what? It, it might as well. I mean, because him and I are on. We'd like, have to look at his chart because it's also possible that he was the religious person that sold you out in the lifetime that you were the witch and he sold you out and he, and he stayed stuck and he's still choosing the religion. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying. No, my brother's caused a lot of trauma in every lifetime, every single one, over and over and over. Yeah, that would be cool because, and we could also do like a, a sinistry chart mm -hmm. to see that karma. Yeah, that's really interesting. And then you've got it conjunct with Uranus, and again, Uranus is always like the rebel. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck you! You can't, you know, tell me what to do. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. What is your bro What's your brother's birthday? Um, January 26th of 1980. Oh, he'd be an Aquarius and Western tropical and a Capricorn in the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We would need to see the rest of his chart to see, but definitely. And he was born in California and I was born in New York. Literally on opposite coasts. Yep. Wow. And he's older or younger? Older. He's, he, he was born in 80 and I was born in 84. Huh. No, he was born in 80. One no, nineteen eighty one. Jesus. Yeah, you'll have to send me his information and I'll run it and look at it. Be very cool. Yeah, I have it because I use like the pattern. I use like so much freaking stuff. What pattern? What do you mean? Well, there's a like I I try to use the, like a the pattern of so taking that taking the Western astrology or whatever uh -huh. and the pattern using like for siblings and mom and dad and like you kind of can go through the houses and you can kind of. 
like pinpoint and pick and true, like what they call like the pattern of the familiar pattern. Oh no, I've never heard of this. Yeah. It's really in depth. It's another, but again, without it lining up to the true, like yeah. I could go so far and then yeah. I'd hit a block. Yes. I'm, like mm -hmm. no matter how many books I'm at, no matter what I did. And then I hit a block and I'd be like, something's not right. Mm -hmm. I'm not done. There's more I need to do. So then another layer would drop and then another layer would drop. What, what can you think of any books off the top of your head for that? Um, I mean, you know, I don't have enough books, so I always need a reason to buy a book <laughs> or like a website or a teacher. I do not off the top of my head. I have it written down You'll in my, it. You'll I will, some stuff later. in my, in my many journals, I'll send you everything that I learned through that because, and all of the stuff that I do, I have like little journals, journals for each okay. one. We'll share or no. Yeah, I'll share you all my secrets, girl. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go to the gym now. Yeah. Go have fun. I went yesterday. Thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Yeah. This was totally yeah. impromptu. Literally, Athena is my new friend. We just met each other and we yeah. had this freaking vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I knew immediately. I'm like, yes, I found her. I knew it. <laughs> I've been looking. Here she is. And she's going to be my friend, whether she likes it or not. I know. So I, did. I kind of stalked you a little bit there. So I, okay. I love a stalker, actually. <laughs> I was so like, I'm not crazy. Perfectly. Yep, you can Google me. I have my own business. You can Google me. I swear. I'm not oh, I do want to follow your business. I'll follow. What do you got? Do you got an uh, Insta on there? Facebook? Yeah. Got, so it's Athena's Mystic Garden. And so yeah, I'm on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Love. TikTok. Maybe if I ever did want a reading, I'd let you read my cards. Ooh. Challenge accepted. Because I never get readings. And I mean, ever. The same. That's why I was wholeheartedly like, girl, give it to me straight. Because I want somebody to not look at the chart and be intimidated because I can read it too. I want right. somebody to be like, yeah. But no, it was probably good that I didn't crazy. know because anytime you know that you're reading for somebody that is in that realm, it does put you in your imposter syndrome, right. which we all have. So I'm kind of right. glad that I didn't know. And I just went with whatever, you know, came up. And again, it was just a half an hour thing, but still. Right. Now you can absorb this and we'll just go deeper and deeper because you know how it is we hit that point where like okay my brain cannot process any more information right now right yeah that's why i felt every i'm just trying to cope with the fact that yeah. i have fucking stellium and gemini okay let me have a minute with this <laughs> right i know i need i'm now that i have you know i was really bummed out when i first kind of checked it out that i didn't have ophiuchus in my chart like there was something about it that too, because not everybody is going to have it fall somewhere like that with your Elium Coeli. That's not a planet, but it's still a placement. What if, what if Orphucus would have fallen in your eighth house or your seventh house? You don't have anything at all over there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I have nothing. It's so weird that I, I like I said, it is literally a case of Gemini, like one human being, one spiritual brain being, you know, and I spend a lot of time disassociating from the human being part of me and spending a lot of time up here because this up here is safer. This down here. Well, sucks. this is why you've decided to balance all that out with the, all this Virgo. So you need right. to be using this Virgo to ground yourself in your body. And that's really what Virgo is. And Virgo normally naturally rules the sixth house, which is the house of health. What is health? It's the body. So right. you are literally split in two with that Gemini and Virgo. And also they're both ruled by Mercury. Right. So you're always in your head, no matter what, even the you're one. always thinking you're, it's always like, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when they say just relax. Virgo wants to write notes and like organize. And then Gemini just wants to like think and talk. And talk. So I spend hours just. Mm -hmm. So you're a plan. Nobody really talk about it too, which was the most, but like the most bumming thing about spirituality is when, when everything goes away. And you're in your highest self. It's a lonely yeah. place to be. I know, girl. Tell me about it. And and through my transition to this astrology, trust me, I pissed off a lot of people. It wasn't intentional, but it's like, it feels like some astrologers feel like I'm attacking their business. And it's like, girl, that was my business too. Yeah. Yep. If I'm attacking your business, I attacked my own. It's okay for us to say, I've had new information come to me. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want to be locked into a, into anything where I get stuck and I'm find myself 60 years old regurgitating the same shit that I've believed or been talking about since I'm 20. I always want to be growing and right. looking at new information. And, and um, that's how you know you can trust your reader. As anybody yeah. that's new out there, anybody, because there's so many new ed oh my God. out there, there's so much crap. 
Yeah, that's why you will never see me doing tarot on TikTok. It's Thank like you, you no, I don't care if you paid me hourly. I would not do it. It no. I, I'm a very or organic that way, you know, like yeah. you need to find me word of mouth. Like it just happens that way. Yeah. You know, like I can't, you, if you, if you're not growing as an individual, you're, you can't be a reader yeah. and I'll die in the hell. Yep. So, love it. Love it. Love it. All right, girl. I'm so hey. glad to meet you. Like face We'll to hang face. out soon. Yes, Come please. Let, let me know. I'll do it again. And, um, okay. Good night, yeah. everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bye Maggie. How was your friend? I'm glad she came to see. Yeah, it. she's yeah, she's another part of my business. She she does uh, my tea. Oh, and that's I, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I have actually six businesses within my business here. All right, I'm gonna go stalk you now. Oh, yeah, girl, I have clothes. <laughs> I have homemade stuff. I mean, I'm an apothecary. I'm your so. biggest fan. Okay, good night. I'll talk to you okay. soon. All right, bye, honey. Bye.